All right, man. Welcome back. Welcome back. Appreciate you for coming back if you've been joining us through the journeys of everything we've been going through. But yeah, man, we're getting back into it. We're knocking out, getting the motor assembled, disassembled, reassembled, all in the same stuff, uh, just to move through it. And then that way we can go ahead and get this car back together. Can't show you all of it. So stick around, catch you throughout. We just drained a little bit of oil is in it, but we're gonna rotate it over and just make sure there's nothing else in there we need to be concerned about. Okay. All that dust, dirt, debris, all the stuff coming off of this thing, crazy. All right, now we can try and get this oil pan off and go from there. I think I'm going to have to move how this is mounted because we're mounted into the oil pan, which is not ideal for what we're trying to do here. So let me move some stuff around. All right. I had to put it down on the ground first and pick it back up, but uh, pretty much now it's going through where it needs to. So we're good. So now we can rotate it like we were trying to do before. And then we have these two stuff here at the top. Right. Keep all those together. And now we should be able to crack this open. Let's see what we're working with here. It's one side. Side number two. Let's see what we got under door number one. Well, there's no metal shavings. So that makes me feel infinitely better. Let's take this winded tray out of here off. Okay. Looks good, looks good. This gasket looks pretty good. In the grand scheme of things, we're still gonna replace it, but it looks good, all things considered. Oil pump also looks good, all things considered. So it's great. Everything in here looks fantastic. Yeah, all, the the all the pistons look good overall, they look healthy. So I think we're doing good. That said, now we can pretty much button all this back up together. We know we're good to go from this standpoint anyway. Everything looks to be okay. Get a flashlight just to take another peek and make sure everything's still looking good. Nothing, no broken pieces or anything, but as far as I can tell, we're looking pretty solid. All right, we got our self tapper. Got an impact just to kind of make it a little bit easier, hopefully. I'm almost try and grab a spot because there's always that little metal section that's in there. Main thing you just don't want to do <clears throat> is hit anything past that. Put it in the center. I'm going to try and get it more on the metal side. <clears throat> Mine kind of went through a little bit, but was able to at least grab a hold of the spring. You probably can't see that, the spring that's underneath. So it just kind of went in like so. 
grabbed the hold of the spring and then was able to come out with that. So now we can throw the new one in, clean the surface up real quick, and then uh, yeah, should be good. Cool, and we have out with the old, in with the new. So we'll just lather this up, put it in there with our Fly Me Out a piece, and we should be good. Now, if you don't have Fly Me Out a kit, I would recommend getting one, but otherwise find someone who can, you can just borrow it from. But this just fits perfectly over the, the crank itself, and you can just slide it on. So basically, that's how we'll be putting on our new seal. We have our bolt, our seal, we're just going to loop this up real quick so it'll slide on nice and easy. And then we should be able to use this and the bolt behind it. Essentially, to just put it in and press it on. Uh, so it's in the perfect position and it can't go any further. Too far deep, too shallow, should be set. So let me get some lube for this real quick. All right, we have our piece. Nice and lubed up. Let's just slide it right on here to get it into position. Nice, nice, okay. Use the Miata, fly Miata piece. Use our bolt, our crank bolt. Use an impact if you got it, otherwise just continue going. And you pretty much go until it can't spin anymore. And voila we are all sealed up again so good to go and now we're just going to try and clean up some of the gunk and nastiness that's sitting here on the engine itself get some of this old grease off good in here and we just need the new seal and then away we go. We have our new rear main seal or just smother it, well, not smother it, kind of just smeared a little bit of uh, gasket material on it, uh, RTV, Jesus, just sm smothered a little bit of RTV on it. Uh, we have our flywheel bolts, we have our flying Miata rear main seal installer so it goes to the perfect location and then just need to clean up a little bit of this oil and then we should be set to throw it in there. All right, got it nice and cleaned up and some brake clean. We will go ahead and throw this on there real quick. There we go. Okay, we're partially on. Put this here. Probably don't need every bolt, but if you got an impact, it doesn't take anything, but a couple of seconds to hit each one, so. Nice, flush, and installed all the way around, nice and perfectly. So, rear main seal, all set. Now I just put it back on the stand. Good, looking good. We got our nice bead. Looking good. All right, cool, cool, cool. Now we can throw on the rest of these gaskets real quick. 
And then we can put our oil pan back on. All right, time to throw on our oil pan gasket. Or our oil pan, our oil pickup gasket. There's two that comes in the kit. I'm not really sure why. One's a bigger hole than the other, but I mean, either one should work just fine for what we're trying to achieve. So now we can lay this back on top. Actually, we should probably put a bead around this first. All right, we have our gaskets. They're different sizes. I'm not sure if you can tell the difference. This one's bigger, this one's smaller. We don't need that plastic in there. The big one goes up front and the small one goes in the rear. And there's a little lip that faces out so you can place it in the right location. Now, usually I will put a little RTV to kind of hold it in place. Man, I wish I had a thing to throw on here. perfections off of it. Put a new glove real quick. Time to torque this head down now that we got all the studs back on, all the bolts and washers on there with a little bit of lube on top. So now we're just going to do it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way around until we're done. But we're going to do it in stages. I'm going to start at 40, I think 45, work my way up to 55 or uh, 6 feet, and then work my way up to 76 feet based off the Miata.net torque specs. So. in there independent and then we can put it back on this uh, after the fact before it goes on the transmission so let's knock that out real quick there we go just need a little bit of oil on there cool now we can paint it i'm just going to do a light little coats here and there just to make this nice and easy all right we've got stuff taped off we're just going to spray everything down there you go We need to put our cam seals in. So I did this before on my other Miata, but I'm just gonna clean off the top of this real quick. Did this in the other Miata, same process before. If you have the flying Miata tool, cool, that's perfect. It works really, really well. If you don't, however, or you've loaned it to someone like I have, and it's no longer been returned back to you, then you can go ahead and just put it in yourself with either a PVC pipe or vacuum pipe, either way. Uh, but I pretty much just lather, not really lather, I just kind of put a little dab of sealant on the outside, even though you probably don't need to, just a insurance kind of policy for myself. I've had some, depending on the brand, kind of leak in the past, so it's just something I kind of try and do now. And just a nice thin layer on top. 
Cool. Really no need for the inside because that's where the ceiling is really going to happen. And then just slide it on top for now. And this fits perfectly around it. So you're not going to grab a hard hammer, just a mallet or something, put it over the top, and then you can just flip it to this side. This side's a little bigger and more concentrated. And realize the valve cap was up as it is. So it's the key thing to look for when you're buying other people's stuff is that everything is actually tight. And song and dance, get her lined up as best we can. Plop it right into place. Cool. So now both can are in, seated all the way. There's really not much, not much further, if any further, that it can go. Just really want to make sure it's nice and flush, so give it a couple extra taps, should be golden. And there we go. All right, and then we'll have to go to get some extra bolts here. This side's good. This side I stole them. I'm not really sure from where or why for that matter, but uh, we'll have to get some more bolts for that. So we'll put some tape down just to make sure. We don't have any issues there, but put this here for our exhaust side. These are some OBX cam gears that I've had for ages and just have never, I used them a long time ago and then didn't tighten everything down properly. So I just kind of left them where they were and then uh, got the HKS ones and I've never looked back. So now we can take a look at this and see if we're able to reutilize this, that'll be fantastic. All right, so I have our piece, I have a little bit of lube. Let's put that out on the edges. Just help it slide in a little bit easier and hold it in place. Now you can try and hit this with a hammer if you'd like, or you can use the bolts and the supply piece. I'm just wipe off my hands real quick. Nice. So we're there. Now we just need some 12s to tighten that down. Hey, look at that. All right, so that's what it will look like at the end of it. Sealed all the way around through and through. So now looking good. And now we can just put on clean this area up a little bit. And now we can set this on <laughs> fully all the way through. So let's put it back on real quick. Now, the cooler route is good to go here. Now we can do the backside and get that hooked up. Cool, so found some extra bolts, some extra hardware, but this is pretty much what we'll be doing. Hopefully, hopefully there's enough room. The way I did it on the other Miata was this was just one piece. It was a custom piece that would essentially come this way, had a N-16 AN fitting on the side. And then this end had a uh, dash, and six, dash six AN, uh, going the other direction for my turbo. But with 1.6, you have on the bottom side a coolant port, so there's no need for that. Uh, but this adapter also allows for the OEM connections and temperature gauge and anything else you need. I've had this for like five or six years and have not used it. So now we can use it. We'll basically just put this on here. I need to take this off. Then we can put this on and bolt it down. All right, so uh, end goal, like I said, is to have everything in time, but I'm gonna have this off one tooth to the right as a starting point. We'll basically put the timing belt on and we'll just make sure it is snug up against the bottom. This way it can't go uh, anywhere. And then we'll use a piece of cardboard, which is what I've always done. Once I got this thing figured out, put a piece of cardboard there and just wedge it once it's nice and tight. Wedge it in there, that way it can't go anywhere. And then you don't have to worry about it slipping off or doing something weird. So we'll wrap it up, wrap it around. So we have it wrapped up. We're basically gonna use our guide here, which there's a big I, big E. And then we're going to turn this with our crescent wrench. Let me move this out of the way. We use this because it needs to be a top dead center. So just make sure it's at top dead center first before you start your timing. Top dead center should also have that lined up, but you can be off one full rotation. So worst case scenario, you just got to do everything again. But get this nice and snug. So if we're looking at it just visually, eye is definitely off. But let's go ahead and rotate this. And 
And then again, we're gonna follow the tooth all the way back. So from my view, we can see the eye is perfect, right where it needs to be at. So now we'll have this still nice and tight as a starting point. And then try and get this on this side. Basically, everything is where it's at. We have this hanging off the edge. We are going to use this and rotate it to where the eye is in the right position. So we're looking good there. We'll bring this over, it should just slide right on. Bada bing, bada boom, we're still in place. And this one now needs to come up just a smidge. There we go. And then you should be able to, and now that everything's lined up, usually when it's oiled up, it's been broken in, uh, this will move on its own. Same with this side, so you kind of have to hold them a little bit easier, but since this hasn't really, the head itself hasn't gone through anything, it's been freshly rebuilt, nothing's really moving, which just makes it nice. So then we should be able to just slide this on without issue, and then we can tighten this up, and we will be good to go. Now, mind you, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just doing. So we are pretty much just going to do exactly what we did for the other stuff. Slowly just wrap it around until it kind of starts working and latching itself in there. And just like that, we're back together again. Nice. So we got everything put on. It's looking good, man. It's looking real good.